tide was coming because of the balloon. And the folks said there was a comet heading our way. a fool until the idea succeeds. What is Whatever you doing here? Nothing. What big is that? Your land sakes. What a coincidence. You've been here the same time as Huck and me. Isn't he grand? I got up close so I could see, and he stopped. He didn't shake his hand. You shook his Well, that's nothing. He's invited us to be the First inspectors of his balloon. Yeah. That is more your hot air time. Come on, step lightly, huh? We'd best speak in the board. So long, Becky. Uh, Tom. Why are you really going in that thing, Mr. Twain? Going traveling? Travel has no longer any charm for me. I've seen all the foreign countries I care to see, except for heaven and hell. And I have only a vague curiosity as concerns one of those. No, friends, I go to meet the comet. <laughs> yes, indeed, I surely plan to. Come on, Huck. Come on, hurry up. You're nothing but a liar and a stowaway, Tom Sawyer. You too, Huck, man. Yes, that's You right. listen. Haley's Comet. I came in with Haley's Comet in 1835 when I was born, and I expect to go out with it. Of innocence and sand. Same carefree laugh of a girl. What happened to Libby, Mr. Twain? Who the hell? We've work to do. Mr. Twain, there's been some kind of an accident. I think uh, a miscalculation. Not by a considerable sign. But we're taking off. Keep one of you. How are we going to get down? We keep a tight tongue, huh? This is bully up here, Mr. Twain. This is glorious. If we have a strike of luck again, <laughs> Down is not our destination, my boy. Oh, no. You mean we're... Where are we going? To Haley's Comet. Haley's Comet? We get burned to a crisp. It'll be the greatest disappointment of my life if I don't meet up with that comet. Have a look back here. Man's plumb crazy. I want to show you something. Run, you stick with me. See here, how we cross the Atlantic, catch this trade wind to where the comet's parabola comes close to the Earth, or close enough. How come a writer knows so much about piloting and navigating? Because long before I was a writer, I was a Mississippi Riverboat pilot. Mm -hmm. Hey, that's an uncommon fine frog. Well, that's Homer. You know, it was a frog like Homer that put me in the writing business. 
I wrote a story about the celebrated jumping frog of Calaveras County. That's right here. Home of Jim Smiley and his famous frog, Donald Webster. Famous frog? Can you tell me what incarnation a frog could do to get himself famous? Oh, Tom. I've been trying everything I know. Not even a little bit famous yet. Well, I'll tell you all about him. Just as it was told to me. <coughs> what a fella, that Jim Smiley. Always betting on anything that turned up. Only thing is, he made sure he won every bet. He catched a frog one day and took him home and said he'd calculate to educate him. Oh, a frog once is educating, and he can do most anything. So he never done nothing for three months. Set his backyard and learn that frog to jump. You bet he did learn him too. All right, then. Let's just see how far you can go. When he saw one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what might that be you got in the barrel? Uh, might be a perch. Might be a canary. Maybe. I think. Don't need this to frog. Mm. So it is. What's he good for? Well, he's good enough for one thing, I should judge. He can out jump any frog in Calabar's County. Well, I don't see no points about that frog is any better than any other frog. Hmm. Maybe you just don't understand frogs. Anyway, I got my opinion, and I'll just rest forty dollars that he can out jump any frog in Cuddlebear's County. Well, I'm only a stranger here. I ain't got no frog. But if I had a frog, I'd bet you. That's all right. I'll go get you a frog. You a hungry frog? <laughs> Smiley went to the swamp and slopped around in the mud for a long time. <laughs> Finally, he fetched a frog and fetched him in to give him to this fella. You, Ricky! <laughs> Here it comes. There's your frog. <laughs> Put my money on Smiley's frog. Me too. Come in. And then, uh, if you're ready, set him along side again, huh? But his four paws even were down. And I'll do the work. Hey, right, on your march. See no pints about that frog is any better than any other frog. I do wonder why in tarnation that there frog just give up. Wonder if ain't something the matter with him. Appears to look mighty baggy somehow. I blame my cat. He don't weigh 50 pounds. Oh, I've been torn swaggled. He was the maddest man. He took out after that fellow, but he never kept him. Shucks, I could write a better story than that. That's what I said myself when I heard it. It was a big success, all the same. I became a writer. I haven't worked a day since. Now that's a job I'd like to get. If you get out of here alive. Mmm. That's it. How come you want to catch that comet so bad, Mr. 
Mr. Twain? Oh, 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 the comet and I are a part of the plan, Angelfish. <laughs> no doubt the Almighty has said here. Here goes those two unaccountable freaks. They came in together, they must go out together. Here, set your eyes on this celestial schooner. Ah, I've had a hot-watering spectacle. Well, Tom and Huck and I... Well, see, we're not so sure... That, that I know what I'm doing up here? What? <laughs> Angelfish is just like piloting a river. You can know the shape of it. Like following a hall at home. Dark. And even if you feel some fear, you know no harm can come to you. But you travel that hallway a hundred times. Nothing but bare feet and face. What are we gonna do? You know your own self. We gotta find a way off of this here balloon, Tom Sawyer. Adventure or no? Okay, no. over here. Over there. Well? I got a plan. Just starting to brew. Well, what is it? First, we gotta get Becky off. She talks too much. Can't keep a secret. So me and Huck was thinking we should set her down and let Becky off. Things are liable to get pretty rough. There is nothing comparable to the endurance of a woman. But this is different, Mr. Twain. We're aeronauts and girls don't belong to aeronauts. She would have to horn in on this expedition. <laughs> but nobody wants to read. Oh, here you are. Doggone it. What you guys doing? Oh, what does this thing do? Go ahead, give it a try. That's my monument to Adam and Eve. There she goes again. Hmm. Thanks. They're naked. So are we all the day we're born. But we learn that they're modest. Not all over. Just in places. But it's just as well, I suppose. Naked people have little or no influence in society. The way I heard it, that E caused nothing but trouble. And I heard that each found the other a considerable nuisance uh -huh. in the beginning. Perhaps you would be interested in my research. Yes, sir, I surely would. And so would I. Well, have a look here. The Diary of Adam and Eve. Look. It all started with the world's first birthday party. There. Oh. Oh, this is nice. Oops. What am I doing? There. Okay. Hmm. This is good. This is cute. Surprise, he's gonna love this place. Adam. 
man. This is for you. truly paradise. Now Adam figured to keep track of it all. But as it turned out, someone else was keeping track of paradise as well. is a good deal in the way. I wish it would hang out with the other animals and leave me alone. The hmm. new creature eats too much fruit. This morning found it trying to shake apples out of that forbidden hmm. tree. Wanting to make friends, I tried to get him some of those apples. I failed. But I think the good intention pleased him. Oh, oh where's my... Ah! Ladder. During the last day or two, I have taken the work of naming things off his hands. He is evidently very grateful. The new creature says it looks like grass. That is not a reason. It is imbecility and high-handed, it seems to me. before I can lodge a protest. I get no chance to name anything myself. He has no gift in that line. I do not let him see that I'm aware of his defect. The naming goes recklessly on in spite of anything I can do. My life is not as happy as it was. Sunday. 
Hmm. The new creature says its name is E. Eh, uh, that's all right. I have no objections. Says it's to call it Eve when I want it to come. In that case, I said it was superfluous. Hmm. This morning, mm. he used a surprisingly good word. Yes, it is a large good word and will bear repetition. Mm -hmm. Superfluous. Mm -hmm. Superfluous. Where did he get that word? I don't think I've ever used it. Superfluous. Friday. She took to beseeching him to stop going over the fall. But they had no other use that he could see. I went over the falls in a barrel. Not satisfactory to her. Went over in a tub. Still not satisfactory. What I need is a change of scene. <laughs> I escaped last night. <laughs> mm -mm. <laughs> but she hunted me out. We'll immigrate again when the occasion offers. Sunday. Sunday was getting to be more and more trying. It was selected and set apart as the day of rest. I go to the water when I need someone to talk to. He is a good friend to me. And my only one. It talks when I talk. It is sad when I am sad. And it comforts me with sympathy. <laughs> she nearly strangled and said it was most uncomfortable. <laughs> no, this made her sorry for the creatures that live there, which she calls fosh. Fish! I don't see that they are any happier than they were before. Only quieter. <laughs> he is avoiding me and seems to wish I would not talk to him. So, I need friends with animals. She thinks that things aren't right. Voila! The buzzard, for instance. She thinks it was intended to live on decayed flesh. But we cannot overturn the whole scheme to accommodate the buzzard. They both should fall, or they both should fly. I don't know which. One of these is a fake. Congratulations, my dear. You have discovered the law of gravity. <laughs> Why, so I have. I always say it's best to prove things by actual experiment, or you'll never get educated. Don't you agree? Oh, I do indeed. Knowledge is not easy. They come by, but there is a fine adult education course nearby, if you're interested in that sort of thing. Really? She is taken up with a snake. And I'm glad because the snake talks, and this enables me to get some rest. But he advised her to keep away from that tree. He told her it would bring death into the world. But that's wonderful, Adam! You'll have fresh meat for the buzzards, and the lions and tigers can quit eating that ridiculous grass. Have you ever looked at their teeth, Adam? They aren't herbivores. I foresee trouble. We'll immigrate. He escaped and rode all night as fast as he could go. <laughs> hoping to get clear of the garden and hide in some other country before the trouble over that apple should begin. <laughs>
We've lost valuable time. As that counts, you've got a lot to learn. Boss, training is everything. I mean, a cauliflower is just a cabbage with a college education. I'll show you the ropes later on. You go down and get warm. Your cabbages. Oh, yes, we are. Tom's got a plan, don't you, Tom? Huh? What? Huh? What? Yeah, Polly? To the adventures of Tom Sawyer. Oh! What's going on? Where'd he go? Certainty is oblivion. Welcome to the mysterious stranger. Hello. Who are you? An angel. What's your name? Satan. Hello. What's the matter? Nothing. Only it's sure a sorry name for an angel. Please come in. Can we help? 
do may make some people. I'll make the king and queen. I'm gonna make a soldier. Look at that little village. There, here's a buddy. Now we'll give him life. <laughs> Looks like my pap on Saturday night. <laughs> wow, look, they're moving. There's like big people. been like the rest of the race. Never quite sane at night. But Mr. Tank, welcome to the Mad Cute Race. That does it. Huh? We're only waiting for the right moment now. Right moment for what? Yeah. Becky, you swear not to tell? Sure. On your grandmother's bones? Well, do ya? Yeah. We're gonna hijack this balloon. What? Hijack? Can't you see it? Tom Sawyer, Aeronaut, says airborne friends from Madman's Death Wish.
win, Tom. Tomorrow. You be careful there. That's the central power panel. Ah, oh, London. Right on schedule. Good thing, too. The comet won't be around again till I'm 150. By that time, I may have changed my mind. All right, Scouts. Which end cover? Well, the steering looks pretty easy. I found the power thrusters, but I don't know. Well, I've found a way to stop this shit cold. Mr. Twain and hijack this here ship. But I don't think it'll be a couple of sissies in the face of real adventure. Tom, is this necessary? There, that ought to hold him. Hey, don't set those things there. The key always has to be just out of the prisoner's reach. So we can plan his escape. Confound it, that's foolish, Tom. To the hell, Mayor Norts! That's aeronauts. Come on. Look! We had you all tied up. Oh, no, 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 no. That was just a little writer's block. <laughs> Never saw such a scape artist. You look about as disappointed as Presbyterians in hell. Hmm. You're thinking we're going to die when we meet up with that comet. We do die. Is there truly a heaven or a hell? Huh? Oh, I don't know. I don't want to express an opinion. You see, I'd have friends in both places. Now consider old Captain Stormfield. Come on over here, Tom. I got something to show you. Tom Hill, is that you? Oh, oh, hi there, Mark Twain. Where might you be going? I might. Uh, I most assuredly am going to heaven. Ah, an optimist. <laughs> Racing his own comet, too. Stormfield's a man with faith. Means he's willing to believe in what he knows ain't so. But we don't deal in cities here. Uh, where are you from in a uh, more general way? Uh, beg your pardon. Uh, uh, put me down for California. Is it a constellation? <laughs> oh, my goodness, no. It's a state. I'm from America. The United States of America. 
There ain't any such orb. Orb? What are you talking about, young fella? It ain't an orb. It's a country. Why, America is one of the finest. <laughs> that wasn't for all. Where are you from? from? Just say I'm from the world. What world? Why, uh, the world, of course. The world. <laughs> Well, there's billions of them. Well, the one that has the sun and the moon and the earth and Jupiter. Hold on. Jupiter. 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 Seems to me we had a man from there eight or nine hundred years ago. (laughs) (laughs) Did you come straight here from your system? Um, yes, sir. (laughs) That is not true. And this is no place for a (laughs) fib. You wandered from your core. Uh-huh. How did that happen? Look, I'm sorry. I, I take back what I said. I confess. But I raced a little with a comet one day. Only just the least little bit. So, only the tiniest little bit. That divergence has caused all this trouble. Well, it's landed you against billions of leagues from the right one. Oh. Oh, go on in. You'll be safe forever and you won't have any more trouble. Yes. yes. I'm off. Well, where are you from? Well, I beg your pardon, mister, but, uh, ain't you forgot something? Forgot something? Uh, Not that I know know of. of. Why, my harp, and my wreath, and and my halo, and and my hymn book, and and my palm branch. I never heard of these things before. Oh, trust me, you won't be conspicuous in this district without it. (laughs) Well, good day. Field of sand, Francisco. Make him out a clean bill of health and let him in. Show me a cloud. I'm all right now. Shh. I think. Shh. Oh, sorry. First, be quiet. A harp, a hymn book, and wings. Good God, what a swindle! I've led to consider a different path. Heaven for climate. Hell for company. Either way, you gotta die to get there. Land Sphinx! Send her back! What's that? Ah, the Sphinx! Nothing to be afraid of, it's only the Thanks. It's Sphinx. Hmm. Now, with the right wind, we should go aloft right here. Comet is still some time off, lest we should impose on this great beast to secure our anchor. We're cooked. That's the end. We're gunners. There is no sadder sight than a young pessimist. Except an old optimist. Ah, uh, let's see. We'll have to wait Come on. to ascend until exactly six o'clock. So when the alarm goes off, and now you can't stop, the axe will smash the sh- What? Thought I heard him coming. Yeah, it's only Omar. I think that ought to do it. Why don't we just take the axe and smash it now? What's the good of a plan? It's no more trouble than that. Time means everything. You heard Mr. Twain. Six o'clock. Come on.
my good old ancestor, Adam. How deep a debt of gratitude we owe to Adam and Eve. They brought death into the world. We never finished Adam and Eve's story. Oh, that's right. I guess we have time. Sure, we've got plenty of time. Oh, let's see, where were we? Oh, yeah, Eve had just eaten the apple and rearranged the world a little. After the disaster, Adam found a place outside the garden and was fairly comfortable for a while. I was not sorry she came. There are but meager pickings here, and she brought some of those apples. It was against my principles. But I find that principles have no real force, except when one is well fed. She's at least a companion. I would be lonely and depressed without her now that we've lost our property. Tuesday. She says it is ordered that we will work for a living hereafter. She will be useful. I will superintend. Oh. Oh. What is it? Fire! How do you know? It looks like fire. It annoyed him that I should know, and he must ask. How did it come? I made it! What are these? Colds! He picked one up, but changed his mind and put it down again. <laughs> then he went away. <laughs> Nothing interests him! I was mistaken about her in the beginning. Perhaps it is better to live outside the garden with her than inside without her. <laughs> Would you like to see my etchings? <laughs> Eve calls it cane. I believe she caught it in the timber. It's a new and different kind of animal. A fish, perhaps. Sometimes she carries it in her arms half the night when it complains and wants to get to the water. I have never seen her do this with any other fish. And it troubles me greatly. I have come to like Sundays. Superintending all the weak tires the body so. I have not seen a fish that could laugh. <laughs> this makes me doubt. I do not love Adam on account of his brightness, though I think in time it will develop. He is self-educated and really knows a multitude of things, but none of them are true. It isn't a fish. In my judgment, it is either an enigma or some kind of bug. I never had a thing perplex me, so... Perhaps I could take it apart and see what its arrangements are. It is not a kangaroo. It is probably some kind of bear. This resemblance to words is extraordinary and is a thing which no other bear can do. This one will be less dangerous when it has company of its own species. I will make an exhaustive search. Why do 
I love him. I guess just because he is a man and because he is mine. It has been a weary hunt, yet I have had no success. But without so much as stirring from home, she has caught another one. I never saw such luck. They were children. Adam and Eve discovered it in time. It was their coming in that small shape that puzzled them. Abel is a good boy, but if Cain had stayed a bear, it would have improved him. It is my deepest hope that we may pass from this life together, but if, but if one of us must go first, let it be me. For he is strong, and I am weak, and I am them not so necessary to her as she is to me. Life without him would not be life. How could I endure it? Hmm. Uh, wind in the east. I think we shall have rain. like a valentine. It's a good word and bears repeating. The garden is lost, but I have found him and am content. Wherever she was, there was Eden. I'm tired and old. I wish I were with my living. You want to meet the comet, isn't it? And I am looking forward to that. But, Mr. Twain, we're too young to die. Die? Little six, you're not gonna die. But how are we gonna get home? Because I get to that comet, this vessel's all yours. This shit, lady? button is just inside the back rail, near the helm. One foot forward of the stabilizer control wheel. 
And what's the distance between my hand and the stabilizer control wheel? Oh, about 14 feet. 14 and a half feet. Okay, Homer, 14 and a half feet once the crow flies. Inside the fence, hold the back foot so you can see the drive, but then slide one big one to least. Well, here goes. All right, Homer. One progressive.
great guns. That was well done. Cabbages to cauliflower. Jim, <laughs> okay, calm down. Come on out and show yourself. There you go, scaring everybody again. You haunted me long enough. Let's get this over with. Craziness. Everyone is a moon and has a dark side, which he never shows to anybody, if he can help it. I've seen you before. You've been on this ship the whole time, haven't you? Why don't we tie that other one up to keep him from going with you? He's such a rapscallion. He must come with me, Tom. I'm not whole without him. What about us? You shall ably sail the Mark Twain around the world for a long time. You are a capable crew, and this ship, a large enough body of work, that you may live forever, or long enough. My books are water. Those of the great geniuses are wine. Everybody drinks water. Let me see. There are a number of things I need to tell you before I go. <laughs> Always obey your parents when they are present. Be respectful of your superiors, if you have any. Rise early, for it is the early bird that catches the worm. I once knew a man who tried it, got up at sunrise, horse spitting. <laughs> It's time. I'm still considering whether to go. I have never seen an atom of truth that there is a future life. Yet I am strongly inclined to expect one. Anyway, don't be such a sissy in the face of a real adventure. <laughs> well, and I'm not as big a fool as Stormfield. If I can't swear, I won't stay. Eden, angelfish, back to Eden. <clears throat> I found this in Adam Lee's diary. You can have it. Yeah, well, I found these. The human race, in all its poverty, has only one truly effective weapon. Laughter. Against the assault of laughter, <laughs> nothing can stop. Well, this is one adventure Mr. Twain wouldn't get around to writing. So I figured to get it all down before I forgot a single thing. Let me help you 